How's it going, guys? It's your boy, Lieutenant Dan here from Unintentional Grounding. Um, just coming with a new video style for you guys, um, a reaction video. Um, I'm going to start doing reaction videos to all kinds of content, uh, Falcons related, uh, whether it be podcasts or other uh, studios or media outlets putting out stuff about the Falcons. And um, I just want to give a big shout out to the guys at PFF, Pro Football Focus, uh, for doing this little bit on all of the NFC team's uh, worst case and best case outcomes. Um, this will be a new style of content for me. So you guys stick through it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified of all our new content going forward. And Hey guys, listen, tell me what you think of this reaction. Tell me what your reaction to this particular PFF video is. Um, and let's just get straight into it. I'm not going to try to stop it too much. Um, I'm just going to stop it when I have kind of a thought or uh, something that I want to say. So uh, let's get straight into it, guys. Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> Best case scenario, much like the Sam Howell one, is Desmond Ritter's the dude, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think they even need to necessarily be that optimistic, though. Like, uh, viability for them. Like, I think Washington needs Sam Howell to be good for them to have a real like high-end sort of outcome whereas i think atlanta really just needs somebody not to stink and it doesn't even need to be ritter like it can be heineke just better than better than mariota was last year like just give me viable viable quarterback play just just don't be actively problematic at the position right we have Bijan robinson in this backfield of studs we have a dominant offensive line we have good receivers kyle pitts drake london we have guys that can make plays. All you need to do is to not actively undermine it by being terrible. I think that's maybe the first point that we get to here is um, just playing good football as a quarterback. You know, every quarterback, no matter which team they are on, which organization they're currently playing for, what college they're with, um, all the way down to Pee Wee, right? Um, Pop Warner, you want good quarterback play and you teach your quarterbacks play well. Um, obviously, you don't want to undermine your quarterback or undermine your organization by putting guys out where they're not ready. You know, like I, I get that. I completely get that. But this kind of take is um, is kind of what all Falcons fans and really more media specifically um, have just that's all they've got. They've got to, to talk about when they talk about the Atlanta Falcons is look. You went out and you drafted Drake London, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson. Uh, you put Bergeron on the, as left guard. You've gone into the draft and picked up multiple guys. You've gone out to free agency and offensively done better for this team. And now you're putting a quarterback into a position where he will be successful because he's tailor-made for this kind of thing obviously outside of a few uh, uh, accuracy issues and a few uh, 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 pieces that he needs to upgrade as a whole, a few traits that he needs to clean up. So I, I, I understand where this is coming from. It just, you know, it doesn't feel like there's really much to talk about here. This is just kind of going, well, if they just don't make mistakes, they're going to be okay. So the other, I would say on the defensive side, as far as best case scenario, is those defensive additions need to be good as well. Jesse Bates, Kyrus right. Campbell, uh, Caden Ellis, a lot of the turnover that they've had on the defensive side of the ball has to hit for this best case scenario. And much like every other team in the NFC South, a, a uh, division title is in the range of outcomes. Because our division is weak or because uh, hope springs eternal in the month of July. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because I, you know, if Ritter hits and he's your guy, I think it's good, though. I mean, I think a best-case scenario is confidence that he's your quarterback going forward. I don't know if it's the worst case if he's bad, other than you're, you're just... It might feel like you wasted a season with Ritter because you made those other additions, and it looks like the rest of the roster is upgraded, but it could be a waste if Ritter is, is a below-average quarterback. 
well, it's a waste if any particular player ends up underperforming. And so this becomes a very lackluster media discussion when it comes to the Atlanta Falcons is that um, what more do you have to really say about Atlanta other than the fact that if they just play good football, they're going to be a good team because they know how to run, run the clock, score often and early, and be able to hang with teams. If they had just won a couple of those one-point losses, Mariota wouldn't have been 5-8. and eight. They would have been something like uh, a 7 and. Th- Seven and whatever, and uh, Desmond Ritter would have never had the. Da, 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 da. I get it. I get it. There's, it, it. there's just really nothing to say here, is there? It's just if they can just get it done, then they're going to be a good team because they have good coaching and they surrounded one guy with a bunch of players. That might be selling a few people on that team short, and you never know. Injuries happen. Graded at 55 last last year. If he grades in the you know low to mid 60s, you're only winning a handful of games, I believe. Any quarterback rated in the low 50, uh, the high 50s to low 60s is going to be a detriment to any NFL team. So again, I'm sorry, PFF, that I'm. it kind of sounds like I'm just dogging on you, but this just is very plain. Yeah, the, the, the problem with him being bad is simply where the next guy is coming from, you know, like because he's because pro- the team is probably not going to be bad enough for them to be picking one, two, three, whatever. Like True. you need a pathway to that next quarterback, but the situation for the next quarterback should be really good. So, yeah, it's if their worst case scenario is, is difficult to kind of articulate because I don't think they can be truly terrible. That's a good take because honestly, it's hard to see the Atlanta Falcons being a two win team or a four win team schedule wise talent wise what they put together system wise the way that the nfl is changing that you have to be very good and viable in the running game you can't just be one dimensional in that and that quarterbacks are becoming more athletic and not true pocket passers but more or less a hybrid of those two things and able to scramble for a few yards now becomes a plus positive play for quarterbacks, especially guys like Desmond Renner running, you know, a, a four five four four, something like that. Uh, part of the best case scenario too is just fun. I say it's a lot of fun having Cordero Patterson and Bijan and True. monster like Drake London, monster like Kyle Pitts, speedster True. like Scotty Miller. It's a fun team, especially yeah. if Ritter can uh, can get the ball out there to those guys. So. Um, yeah, so I think Atlanta could be from division winner like anyone else in the NFC South back to picking in the top 10 and massive question marks at quarterback going into 2024. So kind of the uh, the last bit here is this quarterback has been given basically the keys to the kingdom. This quarterback has been given an opportunity per- to perform. This quarterback has um, been surrounded with talent and been given a system that doesn't ask a lot of him and only asks him to go through maybe two reads maximum. And then if those reads are not open, take the four yards as a positive play, five yards, 10 yards, whatever your legs may turn out to be. And you don't have to be a dynamic runner to make that happen. Aaron Rodgers, even uh, guys like Joe Burrow, scamper and scoot for a few yards here and there. And and our daggers when it comes to third down and second down uh, yardage being eaten up by those legs so uh, i'll say this before we end this video the atlanta falcons are in the perfect spot right now with the talent that they have defensively they're looking to capitalize on your mistakes offensively they're looking to run the clock run the ball score score early and often And just keep opponents having to pass the ball, throwing it into a backfield of DBs that have been set up for a lot of success because they've added the defensive uh, 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 positions from the DL and from the uh, linebacker positions to be able to create havoc and pressure and keep a minimum amount of guys down there so that they can keep more guys out in the, uh, uh, the, the third of the field, the second half of the field to be able to capitalize on um, Aaron throws. So guys, tell me what you think of PFF's reaction. Tell me what you think of my reaction in the comments down below. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hit us up at UNGR underscore show on Twitter and on Instagram as soon as we also get some other social media platforms up. My name is Lieutenant Dan. Rise up, stay grounded, take it easy, y'all.